Namaste. How's it going? Kumbhakas, bandhas, pranayama, mudras. These are all techniques of collecting the energy from the peripheries to the midline. So these are energy channeling techniques. And in the practice of pranayama, kumbhaka or breath suspension is the core. All right. So when I say kumbhaka, it translates as breath retention, but it's more than just retaining the breath. It's not about how long you can retain the breath inside or outside. There are complex underlying techniques your eyes cannot see, but you can feel it internally. And these are all related to what? The bandhas of the energetic anatomy. All right, so let me start this discussion with the bandhas. All right? Bandhas, as I've mentioned in my numerous tutorials about bandhas, they're like valves, like the tap. Either you tighten or you loosen the tap so you can allow and constrict you know, the flow of the energy you know, to that particular center. All right. And in the practice of kumbhaka, you know, the three primary bandhas and the subtle ones play a vital role. All right, so the first of the three primary bandhas we call the mula bandha, and it's the pelvic flu. And in the practice of mula bandha, as opposed to the common notion that we have to tighten and clench the anal genital cavity, no, we have to relax the pelvic flu. Actually, during inhalation, the initial stage of the inhalation, I would categorize the inhalation into like three or four stages. During the initial part of the breath, the pelvic floor drops, it broadens, as opposed to contraction. You don't contract, you don't contract the inner genital region. The reason being, you can do this exercise with me. Contract your uh, inner genital and then breathe. It's restricted, yeah, because you are spending unnecessary effort contracting and using your muscular energy, yeah, where in fact you allow that energy you know, to flow. All right. So the mula bandha, at that initial breath, is relaxed. The pelvic flow drops. This, this is the sacrum, right? The mula bandha is down the bottom. The pelvic flow drops. The pelvic flow broadens. Good. The reason being, yeah, you're using the relaxing of the muscles there so you can collect the energy towards that midline. Right? Because the breath being drawn, being magnetizing, being collecting, being ascending, that's your mudra. Yeah, that's your way of collecting the energy, the unified force. You have many forces inside the body. Yeah? And then you unify them, you collect the force by the utilization of the bandhas from the midline to that particular center. All right. But how can you collect the energy from the very first if you're close to begin with? Yeah. So in the initial phase of the application of the bandhas in the pranayama, yeah, for example, you're doing your nadi shodhana, or maybe ushai, yeah, for that matter. Yeah, inhaling, relaxing the hips, and then lifting the sensation up. I can't overemphasize this point. The energy is rising. Although the breath is entering the body, the prana descends. That's the nature of the breath, the gaseous oxygen. It goes inside the body, but the sensation is rising. How can the sensation rise if you are drawing the breath inward? Therefore, it should go downward. The sensation should be downward, descending. No. Yeah. In the utilization of the mandas, the sensation is ascending. As the air enters, you lift your own energy, the body energy we call the apanavayu. And then the apanavayu is resting yeah, it's located, yeah, it's situated, it could be felt down the bottom of the hips. Yeah. Yeah, the sacrum, the sacred place. Right, so the, the mula bandha relaxes, yeah. so you can draw the breath here. Actually, the energy goes down yeah, to blend, and at the same time, you're drawing them together. So this is now the magnetizing of your 
upon a value. That's, you're actually initiating the union yeah, of, the unif well, of the forces. You are unifying them. All right. Now, this is how I feel it. I'm just relating you know, my practice to you. So, now, all right. So, in a segue. So, how did I, well, develop the skill? Okay. So, asana play an important role here because in the asana, especially hip mobility you know, techniques, they open and then they make your inner linings, the pelvic lining sensitive. And then you will feel, oh, if I do this technique, if I lighten, if I soften my hips, and I can breathe through it, then therefore I can feel something happening there. And then you apply that during the practice of pranayama. That is why we have to follow the steps. Yeah? And asana is the first step to attaining what? Energetic awareness. You can't just shortcut it. You can't just go to pranayama straight away. The body should be opened and developed. All right, asana. Now, going back to the bandhas. Now, what makes yeah, the energy rise if you relax the pelvic flow? All right. So that's the role now of the uh, second, yeah, the higher. Yeah, banda, the next banda. And then the next banda is located down the core region, the Udiyana banda. All right, so the Udiyana banda during inhalation, yeah, and again, bandas are like tap. If the Mula banda, you have to open the tap so it's so loose, yeah, so the uni, Udiyana, Udiyana banda, you constrict it, you tighten the valve. So when you inspire the breath in, you're using your abdominal muscles and the collective effort yeah, of the joints there, you have the muscles, and of course your spine, your awareness, because you've cultivated this and you learn it during the practice of the asana, you're applying it in the pranayama. Yeah. So the Udiyana Bandha tightens a bit like the valve, so you can draw. Yeah, and the sensation of the mula bandha higher. Actually, the mula bandha already initiated yeah, the collection. It's just that the udiyana bandha now reinforces it. It goes higher. Therefore, all right, so this is now where the kumbhaka is about to start because you're inhaling first. Uh, inhaling halfway through the inhalation, the udiyana bandha now. Yeah, collects and slowly, yeah, you're tightening the tap, tightening the valve. Therefore, you catch the head of the energy. Right? And then the head of the energy is towards about a quarter or 75%. No, it's 75% of your inhalation. All right, so if you are breathing in to the 25%, yes, yeah, so I'm just giving you an analogy. Yeah, if you are uh, analyzing the breath as a chunk or as a whole. Yeah. So the initial part of the breath, about a quarter of it, you draw using your mula bandha, and then you lift using your udiyana bandha, and then you seal. When the breath is about to finish, about 80%, you seal. You close your udiyana bandha. So the energy won't drop down anymore it remains higher and confined around the chest region. Yes, yeah, that's, the, that's the purpose of the bandhas. They're like gears. You open the gear, the first gear, the first valve, and then you tighten the next one, and then you close the next one to prevent it from leaking and <laughs> dissipating, and then you confine, and then here, yeah, the Udiyana Bandha can only lift the energy as high as the Manipura, or the, the Anahata. The Manipura, of course, the, the, um, the navel region. Actually, the Udiyana Bandha, as soon as you feel the energy is already inside the belly region, you close it, but you're not squeezing it. It's not clenching. I can't overemphasize. Yeah, Bandha as an Udiyana Bandha as a separate conscious practice is different. I'm not uh, referring to Udiyana Bandha like you're hollowing, like the Makwan, like you are 
really making your belly so flat and then thin, like there's nothing there. It's different. It's a technique. But banda in the application of the breath is organic. All right, I have to be very clear about that. Udiana banda as a banda, as a technique, as a mudra, is different from the banda you apply when you're breathing during pranayama. Okay, so you don't apply the clenching and the tightening and the contraction and the mock exhalation, mock inhalation in the practice of pranayama. It's a different conscious practice. Yeah, ud bandhas in their organic sense are not about muscular exertion. They're more organic. They are the expression of your internal body being open because you've worked on those blockages already. So to speak. All right, so coming back. Udiyana Banda closes. Now the energy is already higher up the Manipura chakra, around the chest region. Good. Now, it's not enough. Yeah, because we need to lift the energy, right? All right. And then this is now the role, the function of, I say, two adjacent or two uh, adjunctive Bandhas. One is around here. Yeah, the bony part of the sternum, yeah, the ribanda, H R H R I ribanda, and yeah, another primary banda, the jalandhara banda. Jalandhara means the high, yeah, the top. Yeah. So the ribanda, what it does, because the space or the distance between the front banda and the uh, mula banda or the udiana banda, they're quite. Yeah, they're quite far. Yeah, so the Hiri Banda actually reinforces and supports yeah the Jalandhara Banda in collecting the energy from the Upper Manipura, Lower Anahata, and Center to the Upper Anahata Chakra. Yes, that's how I feel it. The Anahata Chakra, the Manipura Chakra, they are like, if not three, they are like two, two points there. And in the chest, there are like three. Below the ribs, the center of the chest, and then the upper sternum. And then the ribanda is quite distinctive. It's not Jalandhara Banda. The ribanda is like, um, how can I describe it? It's like, uh, it's like creeping, right? it's like crawling. Yeah? There's like a mesh here, <laughs> like there's a mesh here and then the mesh. Yeah, magnetizes the energy. And in the practice of the Ushai Pranayama, you feel it. Like this part of you becomes sensitive and light. Because the Ribanda collects and lifts the energy so it can yeah, enter the Jalandhara. Yeah. Again, the Jalandhara Banda, while you're drawing the breath in, increasingly becomes active. In the initial breath, it's not. Mula, second part of the breath, Udiyana Bandha. And then the last part of the breath, the Ribanda and the Jalandhara Bandha. Good. Again, speaking of the Jalandhara Bandha, yeah, it's not about clenching and tightening. Yeah, because the Jalandhara Bandha could be done like this. I am applying my Jalandhara Bandha, lifting up. I can feel it. Again, it's internal dynamics. It's the skill we learn and develop through the practice of the asana. Because there's no way but for the body to open as you practice your asana. Therefore, you will develop skill of gaining access to those previously latent or dormant centers. Uh, therefore, in the practice of pranayama, and then this is just inhalation, right? So can you just imagine how complex this process is? Um, kumbaka, yes, kumbaka, hold it as long as you can. But are you, we doing it right? Are we doing it for the purpose, intended purpose, for our safety and for uh, the efficacy of the practice? That's the question. Everyone can hold the breath, but are we doing it properly? All right, so internally, in the deeper sense, bandhas 
are not learned as a separate component. There are yeah, suggested alignment of the body, like folding of the head, lifting the spine upright, yeah, but in their organic sense, you can apply the bandhas universally, whether you're lying down, whether you're just doing your normal task, whether you're slouching or you're driving, they can be applied because they are internal, internal techniques. They're like inside the mind. Yeah. That only you can gain access to. It's not something that you can see physically, externally. It's something you feel yeah, and know subconsciously. Yeah, because when the bandhas become active organically, spontaneously, they would have their way of breathing on their own. Yeah, it's like you have another person inside of you <laughs> doing the breath for you, something like that. Uh, and then you don't have to think and then do it consciously because your body, your brain will just do it for you. All right, now, how, and how are this related to the kumbhaka? All right, now, kumbhaka, breath of tension. All right, so kumbhaka, yeah, although you're retaining the breath, you are actually sealing, you're actually preventing the energy from leaking out. And that's the role of the bandhas, right? So breath retention is not breath as the breath, this, the autonomic function, but breath there means the energy. Sealing the energy, retaining and suspending the energy. Piercing the energy through those important points of the energetic anatomy so we can magnetize the cluster of nerves because those nerves will send information to the brain until such time that the inner brain opens. And that's the role of the bandha. So in the practice of Kumbhaka, so you catch the sensation of the breath, and in the way I feel it, it's going thinner and thinner, like the head of the needle. And I use the tongue as well, yeah, in assisting yeah, the Jalandhara Bandha in sending the sensation of the breath to the brain. Well, that's how I do my kumbhaka. I am retaining the inhalation inside the breath inside, the gaseous oxygen. But I'm using my internal dynamics in collecting yeah, the energy within the breath. Okay, you might ask, yeah, how does the energy feel like inside? How do I know it's the energy? All right, internally, as you hold the breath, I am still breathing. Right. So for example, the breath is like a chunk. While I'm retaining it inside, I use the internal awareness and sensitivity in detaching the energy from the breath. Because the gaseous air and, what, and our internal breath is a collection, it's a collection of the many energetic forces. But you only collect the essence, the bij, or the seed energy. And I'm not making this up. You're like a fish inside. You're like breathing, you have like gills. Even if you're retaining the breath, something happening inside, like you're collecting the very essence, the pure yeah, nature, yeah, like you are sifting, like you are filtering yeah, this big chunk of breath you're retaining, you're filtering it further so you can only collect 
the vital force. And that vital force is sent inside the brain. And that's the function of the other subtle bandhas there, like the tongue, yeah, the jaw, the gums, the lips, the eyes. Yeah. Those are like the subtle mechanisms yeah, we use to make the kumbhaka safe, effective, and meaningful. Right. I know it's quite a complex um, topic to explain through words because these are all uh, sensations. These are all sensations that, you know, for a beginner, this may sound what? What are you talking about? Sifting or filtering the breath. Yes, yeah. the body is just so immense. Yeah, it's boundless. Yeah. Um, the body is hollow inside. It's hollow, there's nothing there. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> when, when it happens, you can now go to those inner pockets, those inner points in the body yeah, you thought that were non-existent, but they really exist, and then you can gain access through them. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Hopefully, this one yeah, clarifies and then um, yeah, assists you in understanding the bandhas, the pranayama, and the kumbhakas in their organic manifestation. I'll see you in the next one. Namaste. <laughs>